Blood in My Eye by George L. Jackson The American Mind Frankenstein's need for a servant was an expression of his diseased ego, so he created a demented, ugly creature, pathologically strong and huge. Dear Greg, the breakdown of establishment conditioning usually occurs first at the university level. Students refuse to accept the lie that our exploitation of the world's peoples is actually beneficial to them. They begin to refuse their share of the spoils. Huey Newton and Bobby Seale left the campus to form the Black Panther Party. The Students for a Democratic Society gave birth to the Weathermen. The rise of socio-political institutions to their present form and complexity was not the result of chance. The corporation, the university, the unions, the mass media, the foundations, the associations, the courts, the prisons, the army, police, national and international, uniformed and disguised, from their beginnings were formulated as enforcers of state centralism. An examination focused on the history of all the major socio-political institutions of the United States, a study in the genetics of hierarchy, would certainly uncover the totally economic motive underlying the foundations of these institutions. For my purpose, I would broadly divide the major socio-political institutions into two classes, one designed by the state to move people into certain actions, and the other to discourage, curtail, or completely deny certain other actions. The unintelligible vastness of these institutions makes it seem impossible that they could be owned and operated by a relatively small number of men, but the truth of this can be demonstrated by documented evidence and irrefutable case studies. The modern, industrial, corporative, city-based state could never function at all without hierarchical control and an acceptance by the people of the controlling hierarchy. Prior conditioning, of course. The effects of ubiquitous self-negation inbred since childhood, of course, again. Certainly, the pervasive nihilism of capitalist man, but these are simply effects. Western civilization is dying because it's tied into an economic system that was decadent a hundred years ago. This system was certainly the calculated creation of a specific minority class. The rise of the manufacturing class was not spontaneous. It is perpetuated beyond the stage of decadence in spite of fits of outrageous disorder. Its seemingly remarkable ability to return from crisis is not proof of natural durability. Rather, it is proof of a destructive will to power at any cost. Frankenstein's need for a servant was an expression of his diseased ego, so he created a huge, pathologically strong, demented, ugly creature. He censored the beast's activity by making him underintelligent. He erected institutions flexible enough to keep the giant working, but rigid enough to forestall any growth of his mental faculties. A brain was grudgingly attached to the beast to provide a way for it to act. The beast worked and fought the enemies of his creator. The beast was content to watch the creator flourish. He lived through his creator. And when he finally saw himself as he was, he went mad. The corporation, the foundation, the association, the mass media, the state-controlled unions, the universities, and primary schools are all designed to move people into very specifically pre-ordered and monitored actions. The actual monitoring is done by a broader segment of the stratified slave state, but the pre-ordering is done by the one-tenth of one percent, the ruling class and governing elite of the corporative arrangement. 
The careful observer can see immediately how the guiding instructions are held together by red tape and rubber bands so that they can be very flexible when necessary. The corporation's flea market and the mass media are relatively new techniques of control, as are the institutional foundations in most of the associations. The foundations, whether family or corporate, are tax-exempt financial mechanisms ostensibly established for altruistic influences in the fields of art and culture generally. They subsidize scientific research, higher education, educational TV, etc. The Rockefellers alone control 13 such foundations, through which they also control the oil holdings of 90 to 100 nations in the third world countries mainly, holdings variously estimated in value from 10 to 14 billion dollars. Similar foundations are controlled by the Fords, Kelloggs, and Carnegies, etc., etc. When the international business interests of these family financial institutions are threatened, the tax-supported international police are activated. After the CIA fails, the special forces are called upon. When necessary, the Marine Corps and infantry intervene. Comrade George